Oh man. Hey, what's up, y'all? Classic Kev, back with another episode. Honestly, probably the most important episode yet. All right, y'all, so we're looking at these markets right now. Bitcoin broke a key resistance level at 42,000. Ethereum surging over 3,000. Solana, $121, up 7% on a day. So guys, as we talked about in previous episodes, it's just math, right? We're just looking at the math now. I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to give up too much hopium, guys, because I always encourage, not financial advice, always encourage taking profits along the way, right? But I'm going to go over some data. I'm going to go over some news stories of why I think that it's definitely bullish news. It's nothing but bullish news, but but as always, guys, could be a bull trap. So plan accordingly. So um, let's go ahead and let's, let's do some TA on this episode. Oh, man, look at the RSI levels. The consolidation period is over. No, I'm just kidding. We're not, we're not doing TA. TA is boring, guys, and it's, 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 it's right only like half the time. So no TA today. But, but I'm going to show you the most bullish story I have on the day right here. Tesla's Bitcoin holdings valued at nearly $2 billion at the end of 2021. Boy, I can remember a time on this channel when Elon Musk was doing nothing but FUD in Bitcoin. I even did a video on it. Maybe he watched it. Do y'all remember when Elon Musk was bearish on Bitcoin? Pebridge Farm remembers, right? So um, this is big news, guys, because unfortunately, Elon has crazy ability to move the markets, whether it's Dogecoin, Tesla, Bitcoin. I mean, he tweets something and, and the markets move. It, it's just, it, it just is what it is. I don't know why. I wish it would stop. But, um, all right, here's a cool article I found, guys. Ethereum eyes $3,500 as Ethereum price reclaims pandemic era support with a 40% rebound. So, guys, it looks like we got some support levels that are in the in the upper 3000s. So, we could see a $3,500 Ethereum before you know it. And as we talked before, guys, you got to remember, Ethereum, they're burning a lot of it, right? It's becoming semi-deflationary as we move to Ethereum 2.0, which is basically a scaling solution to get the congestion and uh, all the gas fees down on Ethereum. So as we move to that Ethereum 2.0, they're going to be burning a lot of the excess supply. Also, too, you know, you guys notice NFT craze going on right now. Well, when you see Justin Bieber buy a Bored Ape Yacht Club for like, you know, 100 Ethereum or whatever, that's a lot of Ethereum in circulation with these transactions. So... Um, the NFT markets are definitely what's helping the Ethereum uh, see this quick rebound. And remember, these markets flow down. So as you see, you know, you're going to see some coins pump, some random coins pump here and there. You know, meta, a lot of these metaverse plays gala games and stuff. But but the, the markets, the way they really move is Bitcoin has a jump up and the money flows down. Why? Because the big money takes profits, right? The big money takes their profits from Bitcoin and Ethereum and they roll it down into micro caps, right? And the job for you as an investor to identify those micro caps and get your, get your position set before the big money gets in, right? Um, I want to talk about some other, some other, this is actually you know this is this is actually a really bullish story for me. And um, this uh, GoFundMe's wretch treatment of Canadian truckers was the best advert for Bitcoin. So I don't know if y'all seen this or not. GoFundMe uh, freezes Canadian Freedom Convoy page after it raises $10 million. So go look at what's going on in Canada right now. And uh, a bunch of people were raising money for the truckers fighting for our freedom, and they raised about $10 million. Well, GoFundMe decided to freeze the account for whatever reason. And what this, what this really is doing is showing the world why we need why we need Web 3.0, why we need Bitcoin, why we need blockchain technology, why we need decentralization. And look, I don't care what side of the argument you're on. If you're on, you know, the trucker side or you're on GoFundMe side, that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, do you think it's right that one individual or a corporation can overrule the, the masses of people, right? No one man should have all that power. So this this is showing, and then look, look at this article. Spotify appear to quietly delete 70 Joe Rogan podcast episodes unrelated to his C-19 misinformation uh, controversy. So Spotify deleted, and this is Web 2, guys. Web 1 was just like the regular internet, right? Web 2 is these, you know, Facebook and these social media platforms. And right now we're seeing, we're watching in real time, the problem with Web 2. Now, again, I don't care what your thoughts on Joe Rogan. 
I watched all these episodes they deleted, and if you really know what's going on, <laughs> you understand why they deleted it. And again, guys, if if you hate Joe, love Joe Rogan or hate Joe Rogan, do you think it's right that a corporation should have this much power, right, to restrict freedom of speech? And I know what you're thinking, oh, Kevin, but they're private companies. No, nah, they're really not private companies because of this. Section 230, how it shields Facebook and why Congress wants that change. So they have special provisions for these big tech companies that pr protect them from, from legal re repercussions, right? So these tech companies, they're supposed to just act as like the way the telephone acts, right? So you can use the telephone, you can call it. The telephone is just the, the bridge connecting everybody, right? Because they don't want it where if something illegal happens, on, on a telephone call, the telephone company can't be sued because that wouldn't be fair, right? That's the way Facebook and these big tech companies were supposed to be. They were supposed to just be ways of connecting us, not uh, not uh, have biases. And, and again, I don't care what side the aisle you're on. Just ask yourself a question. Even if you're on Spotify side in this agreement, do you think it's right that corporations and big tech should be able to silence individuals, right? Because even though you might not agree with Joe Rogan's uh, views or you might not agree with the Canadian truckers, do you think it's right that they can censor them? Right. So what this is doing, these Web2 legacy systems and look, look, look at this article. It, it, it just it just it's all happening at once. It's almost like it's planned. It's pretty crazy. Fa Facebook is shifting its Libra cryptocurrency plans after intense regulatory pressure. So Facebook's basically scrapping their their crypto idea right they're, they're moving in a different direction but if they would have just invested the money in bitcoin but they they don't want to invest the money in bitcoin because bitcoin is fully decentralized right it's the people's money so what we're watching happen in real time is the legacy systems the web 2 legacy systems implode themselves and new systems will evolve well hopefully will evolve from this and the new systems will be completely decentralized systems so where we can where we can have freedom of information and there is there is nobody to attack right because basically spotify is getting attacked for these views and spotify is like look we're just a platform right we you know in a lot of times they cave to the mob right so with a decentralized spotify there's no one to attack. The program would just exist. The information would just exist. And at the end of the day, guys, we have freedom of speech. And if these if these big tech companies don't like this, then they, they, they should get rid of this Section 230, right? Because they should not have biases. They, you know, Republican or Democrat, it's not right. And I think all of you watching this will probably agree with that. But again, guys, this is not a political channel. I'm getting off topic. So let's move on. So, um, Super, super bullish Polygon Matic news. As you guys know, Polygon Matic is one of my largest holdings. So Ethereum whales accumulating Polygon Matic, Loop Ring, and two low cap altcoins according to whale stats. So as you all know, you know, the blockchains and immutable ledger were able to, to watch uh, big transactions. And a lot of these people are tracking the whale wallets, right? So, um... So, uh, you know, and it's crazy. I just talked about this, that, you know, if you're seeing price action Ethereum, it's going to come down to uh, to Matic eventually because Matic is the layer two of Ethereum. So anytime you see positive price action or negative price action for Ethereum, you need to watch Matic because I think it's going to move in correlation going forward in this. Um, also, Loopering. Um, I had a small position in Loopering. I sold it. Uh, I believe it's a, a NFT. Um Something to do with GameStop or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, do your own research. So positive, positive news for Matic. Really awesome. All right. And it's crazy. I just, I just, uh, I just checked out this article. This article is actually a little older, I think. Kim Kardashian and Floyd, Mather, Floyd Mayweather sued over alleged crypto scam. The celebrities promoted a, a, a shit coin. It's called Ethereum Max before its value fell 98%. And um, looks like Paul Pierce was involved in this too. Um, and again, guys, I, 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 that's what I was saying last episode with the Super Bowl coming up. These celebrities and athletes, they're so used to just taking checks and endorsements from companies and, and just basically selling out that they don't realize that they're hurting people. So when they promote this Ethereum Max, which Floyd made, he might have not known it was a, a scam or a shit coin, but his people should have done that research because that coin fell 98%. I don't know shit about Ethereum Max and I don't care because I would never buy a coin that was promoted by Kim Kardashian, right? So 
again, let's use this as let's use this as going into the Super Bowl to <laughs> basically don't buy any coin or any NFT project that's promoted during the Super Bowl, right? You, you, you'll probably be better off. So sucks this is happening to them, but hey, you know, like I said, it's not just about being sued. Now these people's reputations to me are ruined, right? And any celebrities that that's why on this channel, guys, I ain't took a check from nobody. I haven't, you know, I've actually been kind of offered a few times now, but for the most part, I haven't really been offered. But if I ever do take money or ever do take an NFT, I'll be sure to be very transparent. And because at the end of the day, guys, your reputation's everything, right? You, you, you if you lie or mislead people, and you ruin your reputation, there's no amount of zeros at the end of that check that I think can um, can make that right or make that worth it, you know? Reputation's everything, guys. So um, let's go to next story. Um, so this is this is really bullish news. Uh, cryptocurrency miners rush to Texas, working to turn Austin into Bitcoin and mining capital as power grid stability is in question. So Wow, wow. So remember when China banned Bitcoin, everybody was freaking out. And I was sitting there like, this is good news. You don't want China holding the hash rate and having all the Bitcoin and, and being the mining capital of the world. You want the mining capital of the world to be the United States, right? So as always, Texas is usually ahead of the game and they're usually one of the first movers on issues. And unfortunately, where I live, Louisiana, we're usually last in everything, so we'll probably be last in this. But but I'm actually working right now. I'm gonna try to bring some. I'm try something to bring some mining companies to Louisiana. I actually do have a few contacts in politics that are actually listening to me. But but unfortunately, I don't really have like a too technical of a background. Meaning that I know a lot about mining, but I don't know a lot about you know uh, you know the infrastructure around it right you know what i'm saying like I, I i probably couldn't build a miner or i'm sure i could learn how to do it i just don't have experience in that field but but i i, I see what's happening i see you know that mining is going to be the future and if if states are smart they will incentivize mining companies to come there because one tax revenue two jobs three property value i mean it, it, it's just it and they're going to revolutionize green energy. I mean, you know, where I live in Louisiana, guys, we got the Mississippi River right here, right? If you could create some type of turbine to power these computers, we also have refineries. So refineries have uh, uh, excess that runs off in, into a flare, right? And it burns off the excess. So when you're flaring off that gas, that, that byproduct of what they're producing in a refinery, that, and that's just wasted energy. So what companies are doing, they're hooking up to those flare gas emissions and they're, so it's not green energy, but it's energy that was wasted otherwise, and they're using that to mine crypto. So that could 100% be done here. It's just that getting the 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 brains, the money, and the backing of uh of uh you know the the local leaders in order to do that. So that's kind of what I'm working on behind the scenes. But um anyway, so uh awesome article I just seen on on uh, up on Blockworks. The upside is huge. Trade Fi talent flocks into cryptos. Professional ranging from college graduates to 30 year finance vet veterans are pivoting into crypto, a source that top global uh, capital market firms said. So, guys, so the money is in crypto, right? The money, and if you're somebody and you're looking for a job or you, you hate the job you're at and you're into crypto, guys, you could get a job in this right now. You know, you could learn, um, say, Solidity. That's the programming language used for Ethereum. You can learn Solidity on YouTube videos, right? And it does, if you're not into programming, there's a million jobs right now in the crypto ecosystem that, you know, if you made it this far in the video, you're probably smarter than like 90% of the country when it comes to crypto because nobody knows anything, right? So you kind of got a head start. So if you're something like, guys, there's people, they pay people to be moderators on Discord channels, right? On NFT and Discord, they're paying people. So there's so many jobs in crypto. You just got to be creative and you really got to market yourself. So I would definitely, if you're somebody looking for a change of career, I would check this out because you could, this is, this is six figure a year jobs, guys. Easy, easily. Um, then uh, last thing I want to talk about, guys, JP Morgan, uh, uh, they posted this, Bitcoin beats gold and scarcity dur durability profitability, fungibility, uh, divisibility, verification, and censorship resistance. Remember, that's what we were talking about 
with the Web 2, the Spotify, you know, debacle, that this is completely decentralized. There is no central point of authority. There is no there is no overreach from anyone. It just exists. It's the people's money. Anyway, y'all, I'm Classic Kev. Hopefully these markets continue. Let me know in the comments if you think that we're going to continue to rebound. And if you made it this far in the video, uh, leave me uh, a 100 emoji in the comments. Anyway, y'all, I'm Classic Kev. I'm out. Peace.